Um, you know, as, 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 as I'm uh, greeting everybody, it's, it's hard to not say good morning. You know, say something uh, different because I'm so used to saying good morning, but then I got to thinking, you know, on the other side of the world, it's already morning. It's already Christmas Day morning. And so there's a lot of uh, churches, a lot of brothers and sisters in Christ around the world. Uh, and we're, we're joining our voices with, even at this time, as we uh, give uh, God all thanks uh, for sending his son uh, to be our savior. So, you know, we're not just us here, but we're part of that grand communion called the church. And what a blessing and miracle that is. Um, everything uh, uh, that you need is in the order of service this evening, except for the hymns. Uh, those are referred to, so you'll need your, your hymnals this evening uh, for uh, the hymns. Uh, just a, a couple of uh, couple things here. As we sing Silent Night this evening, uh, Jen will be playing for us for the first couple verses, and then she's going to uh, cut out on the third verse, and we'll sing that a cappella this evening. And uh, so sing loud and, and uh, as uh, we uh, sing uh, that wonderful hymn this evening. Um, I think uh, that's all the announcements I have here. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, begin with our opening hymn, hymn number 379, O Come All Ye Faithful.
I invite you to stand as you're able, and we continue with the Christmas dialogue. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Please be seated. In the beginning, God created everything that exists. He created the world, the plants, the animals, and all the things that we can visibly see in this world. But he also created the invisible things, such as the angels. But then God created human beings. He created Adam and Eve in his image and in his likeness. And given, had given them dominion over the world. The world was a perfect place to live in. Marriage was as it was intended. The joining of two lives of one man and one woman. In perfect harmony with each other and with God. They knew what the Lord's will was. And they simply did it because that was what was natural for them. The Lord had given them only one command. Not to eat for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For on the day that they would eat of that tree, they would surely die. Well, we know what happened. They, they went and they believed the lies of Satan in Genesis 3. As Satan told them, you can be like God. You can be your own God. You can be the master of your own destiny. And they believed the lies of Satan. And so they ate of that fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And sin and death came into this world. But the Lord loved his creation. He loved his creation so much that he gave a promise uh, that to send us a savior. And speaking to the serpent uh, in Genesis 3, the Lord says this. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This gospel promise is fulfilled in Jesus Christ, who, uh, who on the cross, though his heel was bruised by Satan as he dies on the cross, yet at the same time he crushes the power of Satan. It's, this is what is foreshadowed in this wonderful promise in Genesis 3.15. And it's this gospel promise that's repeated throughout the centuries, each bringing in a new insight in how the Lord would accomplish his plan of salvation. We continue with the singing of the next hymn, hymn number 380, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
Scripture long foretold the birth of our Savior, but who is he? God's word makes it clear that this Savior is none other than God himself. St. John in his gospel on the first chapter says this, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The God who created this world and brought light out of darkness will shine the light of his glory in this world as God enacts his plan of salvation to save us from our sins. As Jesus hung on the cross, it appeared as though the darkness had overcome him, as though Satan had defeated our Savior. But it was rather the opposite. On the cross, as Jesus shed his blood, he overcame sin and Satan. And through his glorious resurrection on Easter morning, he burst the bonds of death itself. St. John continues as he says, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. That little word dwelt means to tabernacle, to pitch a tent. It calls to mind how God dwelt with his people in the Old Testament through the, through the tabernacle and then later on through the temple. The Lord speaking through the prophet Isaiah also says this, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now the Savior, born of the virgin, is God himself, who will come and to be with us. That is what Emmanuel means, God with us. And so it ties in nicely with John's gospel that God has come to dwell with his people. And what a comfort that is today, that the Lord is still with us, that Jesus Christ is God who dwells with us. And today Jesus dwells with us, his church, through word and sacrament. Through these precious gifts, our Savior comes to us and gives to us the, givenness, the gifts of forgiveness of our sins and the gift of eternal life. We continue with the next hymn. Hymn number 357, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Kids often spend a lot of time under the tree, uh, peeking at the presents that are accumulating at, uh, throughout the season of Advent until Christmas is finally here and those presents are finally opened. How easy it is to think that the biggest gift uh, is the one that is the best gift and the most expensive gift. How many of us have ever taken the biggest gift and, and, and put that first and all the smaller gifts aside because we think that big one is going to be the best only to find out that inside that big uh, gift is a, a, another box and inside that is another box and inside that another box and another box and another box until finally maybe you come to a pair of socks in that big old box but yeah, on the other hand there's a present that's uh, just, a, just about this size that's given to mom. It might be a diamond ring, might be a, a necklace, it might be a bracelet, but that present is the most expensive one under the tree. They say great things come in small packages. How true that is the case with our Lord and Savior Jesus when he was born. He wasn't born in the most luxurious of palaces, in the most important city of the time, which was Jerusalem. No, the Savior was born in a small village, as the prophet foretold. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. The Savior came into this world in the lowliest of places, and yet from this humble place called Bethlehem, which means house of bread, would come forth the one whose origins are from of old, from before even the foundation of the world. It is he who is the bread of life, and he comes to give eternal life to all who believe in him. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Your, fa your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This bread that came down from heaven, this is the bread that came down from heaven, so that the one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. We continue with the next hymn. Hymn number 361, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. We live in a world of scandals. It seems like every day there's a new scandal uh, in the news that's changing the way we think about our world and maybe even thinking about the person involved. But what about when scandal hits our home? I wonder how Mary, Mary's mom and dad reacted to the news that she was pregnant. The shame that was brought upon the family in those days was tremendous. And there's also a great deal of fear because they loved their daughter and she could be stoned to death for what was seen as adultery. For Joseph, the hurt must have cut really deep uh, so, uh, because he was an honorable man and he thought Mary would be an honorable wife for him. But again, he felt betrayed. Yet in mercy, Joseph decided to divorce her quietly so that Mary's life would be spared. But from this scandal, the Lord would bring his good news, the salvation of the world. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found to be a child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be registered. This was the first registra registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Sometimes things happen at inconvenient times. Like the, tire, the time when your tire uh, of your vehicle blew out on you as you traveled, uh, maybe for work, maybe you're on vacation, uh, maybe you're on your way to a church service some evening. Or your flight gets delayed uh, uh, for days because of a blizzard. Or, as we're hearing in the news, uh, if you're out east, because of uh, fear of the COVID virus and people being stranded, uh, and maybe will be stranded for days because of those. Maybe you're asked to do just one more thing about, uh, amongst the million of other things that you have to do in order to prepare for your family's celebration of Christmas. For Mary and Joseph, this was not the ideal time for her to give birth. When they got to uh, Bethlehem, everything was full and there was no place for Mary uh, to give birth except for a stable. And, and the thought here is that the stable may not have been a stable as we think about it, but more of a cold, damp cave that was all that was available that was being used as a stable. 
Now we like to think that this stable was the cleanest stable that there has ever been. The straw in the manger was the freshest and the cleanest of all the straw that has ever been. We like to think this because we want our children born in a sanitary place. But this stable was anything but sanitary. You would, you would think that God would have a, a better place for his son to be born. But even in this, it shows just how low God's love goes for you and for me. That he goes to a, a, a stable, born in a stable that is not sanitary, that smells and everything else which foreshadows what he also does for us as he goes to the cross, where he takes the filth of our sins and the, and the sins of the entire world upon himself as he sheds his blood for you and for me. Even now, lying in, this main, in the manger is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, who takes away your sins, so that you and I can be called children of God. We continue with the next hymn, 364, Away in a Manger. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch of their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swallowing claws and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying, praising God for all that they had heard and seen, 
as it had been told them. Tonight or tomorrow, we'll be in our homes opening the presents that have been placed under the tree. And what a joy it is to open those gifts and, and for parents, and what a joy it is to see your children's faces light up as they open their gifts. But these presents are not the reason for the season. These presents serve to remind us of the greatest gift ever given, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who brought salvation to this world, to you and to me. Like Mary, we can ponder the greatness of this gift, not only tonight, but we have opportunities throughout this entire weekend, tomorrow, and even Sunday, to ponder the greatness of this gift. But even if we would come on these services, still that's still too small of a time. This gift is so great, it needs to be pondered each and every day. Because each and every day, the Lord Jesus comes to us through his word as, we, as he comes to us and shares that wonderful good news of our salvation that he has won for us. Our Lord Jesus really is the gift that keeps on giving, who continually gives us throughout the year as we come to him in word and sacrament. He comes to us with the message of forgiveness and eternal life. And he calls on us to ponder that anew each and every day. What a wonderful gift we have been given. A gift that is too great for us to keep to ourselves. Like the shepherds, may we also go out and share this wonderful news, not only with our family and friends, but with those within our communities, that they also may know of this joy that we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A blessed Christmas to all of you, in his name, amen. We continue with singing the next hymn, hymn number 368, Angels We Have Heard on High.
All right, just please stand as you're able as we continue with the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God Almighty, we come before you on this most holy night in awe at the wonder and majesty of the Incarnation. The Savior of the nations has come, and with joy we greet the newborn King. Let the proclamation of his birth sound forth throughout the world. Give to your church faithful pastors to proclaim the good tidings of his birth, and give to your people willing ears to hear and believe. In the birth of your Son, you have signaled the beginning of a new creation. While we still live in a world wracked by the ravages of sin, we know that the final victory is yours. Watch over and keep safe emergency workers and all those whose vocations make them absent from their families this evening so, we, so they, they can look out for the well-being of our families. In the birth of your son, we have, you have visited and redeemed your people. Continue to visit those who are lonely, the sick, the recovering, or those who are near death. Let your presence be a comfort to them and give them perseverance until the time you grant healing, relief, and deliverance and peace. In the birth of your son, you've made a new family of all of humanity. Keep us ever mindful that Jesus is for all people and give us opportunities to tell others of the good news of his coming so that they can join in the praise of your holy name. In the birth of your Son, you have called people of all times and places into the body of Christ, the church. We give you thanks for all the believers who have gone before us, especially those who have been with us during Christmas's past and are now with you. Give us a sure confidence in your promise of resurrection and eternal life and bring us at last together with them into your presence at the full coming of your kingdom. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend ourselves and all those for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to remain standing uh, and turn your, uh, on your uh, candles this evening. As the lights are lowered, we will continue uh, with the service, uh, the light of Christmas. As the, as, the God, as the light of these candles illumine our faces, may it symbolize the light of the gospel which shines from the face of Christ, who once was a child in the manger at Bethlehem, and which one day will shine on us directly from his throne on high, in a city that needs no can, candles or sun. Rejoice, for by the light of the world we are transformed to, be, to let our light shine as a witness to the world. We, with unveiled faces, all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. We continue with the hymn of light, Silent Night.
are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. As the lights are turned on and we extinguish our candles this evening, we continue with our departure hymn, 387, Joy to the World. Please be seated. I'd like to, uh, again, welcome everyone here this evening. And all special welcome to any guests and visitors who prayed your time here. It was a blessing for you this evening. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone back tomorrow morning as we continue the celebration of our Savior's birth with the Christmas, Christmas uh, Day Festival service. Our Lord will be here in the flesh as we celebrate with the Lord's Supper uh, tomorrow morning. So I'd like to back there, and if you can't, uh, also, Sunday morning is another opportunity in which we'll be celebrating our Savior's birth. Uh, for all those who are traveling, we pray safe travels for each and every one of you. And from my family, from Deborah and our kids and myself, I want to wish you all a blessed and Merry Christmas. God's blessings to you all. <laughs>